Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. All right, so today we're going to talk about a basic approach to the scintigraphic GI bleeding study. Um, this can be used to look for lower gastrointestinal bleeds and is sensitive for slow or intermittent hemorrhage. Uh, it's going to be pretty important to get a sense as to what the patient anatomy is and just be aware of potential pitfalls in this sort of study. Um, so we're going to go through some of the essential kind of checklists when you're going through this um, or in, in kind of big picture approach. Okay. So as with any sort of study, you want to have a sense of underlying like bowel anatomy to look if there's been prior surgery, resections, if the patient's bowel is displaced. Uh, if there's any sort of, you know, obstruction, mass lesions, things like this. Um, you want to get a sense of the overall hemodynamic status of the patient um, and see what is the level or what is the, the suspicion for bleeding. Because if the bleeding rate is too slow, you can get a, fa a false negative study, okay? Um, once, you, once you have that sense of the patient, um, we're going to take, you know, we'll look at the study itself, look for limitations. Um, and then we'll and then look specifically for active bleeding, and then be aware of potential pitfalls, um, which frick, you know, which um, appears as extra GI uh, activity or you know potential extra GI activity um, can simulate active bleeding, and we'll kind of go through some potential circumstances um, where you know. Uh, kind of a non-hemorrhagic, non-GI activity can, uh, can, can be a pitfall. Okay, so we have here kind of like the raw or, or the dynamic images of a GI bleeding study. So once you have a sense of what's going on with the patient, we have here the first couple images, you know, the blood pool or flow phase, uh, and then we're kind of, we move into it and we transition into, you know, time points where we expect um, active GI bleeding to occur. I mean, so you can see initially that you see um, vasculature, and then as you c go on, there is, uh, you can see some background activity, and here we see kind of a non-motile ability kind of projecting uh, the lower pelvis. You can actually see some, you know, normal, uh, you know, you can almost see like the left, you know, left upper extremity there. Um, uh, and, and this, we're going to, if when we correlate with um, anatomic imaging, you can kind of, uh, cor you know, correspond this to, you know, uh, urinary tract activity, um, genital urinary activity, and a normal normal penile blush uh, in this male patient. Um, so as, as we go down and then we go further, we can kind of get these summative images, which show the activity over over um, over the whole time course of the study, both in the kind of flow blood pool phase and then kind of um, where we would expect abnormal GI activity. Um, so these can kind of give you a big picture idea, um, though kind of the dynamic images, especially with windowing and, le and, and leveling to make sure you can detect cell abnormality, these are going to be the most important going back and forth and especially getting a sense as to uh, and then looking especially carefully at regions, you know, between, you know, is, you know, uh, in the anatomic areas where they're suspecting a slow bleed. Um, that's going to be very useful. So when we're looking for slow gastrointestinal hemorrhage, there's three key uh, features we're really looking for. So feature that, uh, you know, activity that conforms to bowel. So it appears in and conforms to the expected distribution of bowel in this particular patient. Um, and again, prior imaging can be important to get a sense as to what that uh, expected distribution is going to look like in your particular case. Um, you want that activity also, so that's one. You want the activity to increase over time over the course of study and should move anterograde and retrograde through the bowel anatomy. So you know that. So we note here that this kind of normal penile blush is pretty stable and it kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, does not, uh, you know, move back and forth uh, along along bowel. So we're not actually seeing any. A clear evidence um, of active GI bleeding in this study. Um, and yet one of the things you want to think about is that there are many potential sites of activity um, where uh, where kind of that are either normal or just not associated with the gastrointestinal tract um, that can that can lead you around, down the wrong path. And I'll, I'll 
a lot of these are fixed. Um, so if you use the three criteria, you can kind of sort out what is active GI bleeding versus what is a potential pitfall. So um, as with most, you know, technician studies, if you, if there's thyroid, salivary gland, and stomach uptake, you want to think about free technician, you know, we see genital urinary tract, um, uh, activity frequently. Um, you can take a look at, um, like a lateral view. You can, you can do like a post void, uh, image capture to troubleshoot uptake. If you're concerned, um, you know, normal penile blush, um, this can be, uh, you know, can, can appear um, using lateral view there can be helpful in differentiating against like a rectosigmoid kind of very distal bleed. Um, and then, you know, if you have, if there are vascular stents or grafts, if you have, you know, an accessory spleen or splenosis or hemangiomas in, uh, you know, uh, you know, hepatic hemangiomas, if there's venous varices, if there's other sort of um, vascular anomalies, these can kind of appear as tubular structures simulating bowel activity, but uh, frequently those will be kind of constant and not increasing over time and moving back and forth or anterograde, retrograde, as you would expect for uh, a GI bleed. So those are kind of potential things to think about. And again, all of these um, uh, are reasons why it's particularly helpful to look at prior CT MRI or, you know, other imaging that can give you a sense as to what any activity that you see might correspond to. Um, so that's the, the kind of basic considerations. And so just to recap, you want to get a sense as to what's going on with the patient, review um, the charts, review prior imaging, get a sense as to where you might expect any abnormal activity, um, you know, get a sense as to wh whether if there is a good blood pool phase um, if there are, if you do need additional images, lateral or you know post void for problem solving, and then you want to look for those three essential features, conforming and appearing in bowel, increasing over time and moving back and forth, and then you'll be just aware of those kind of uh, more common pitfalls, and that 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 will uh, help you understand what's going on in these sorts of studies.